This is the city of Agra, home of a new wonder of the world. Once it was the capital of the Muslim conquerors of northern India. Today, Agra is a railroad junction, pulsating to the beat of trade and commerce, the jangle of hawkers, gawkers, peddlers, and holy men, and the din of traffic, trucks and taxis, oxen and elephants. But noisy, dusty Agra swirls around a core of serenity. Within a red sandstone wall reached through this gate a hundred feet high, fashioned of eight different ornamental metals. And then you see an elegy in marble. This is the architecture of perfect peace. Yet we owe its existence to a man who commands armies and leads military campaigns, a man of tremendous energy, whose name Jahan means master of the world. With much bloodletting, he ruled 17th century Muslim India from the Red Fort at Agra. But the threat of being overthrown hangs over him always. Despite his ruthlessness, he is a builder and beautifies his domain. When not off to war, he basks in luxury. Tempered by two wives and a harem of concubines. They are a display of Jahan's power and wealth. He takes the same pride in his harem as he does in his thoroughbred horses. Then his life is changed. For the first time, he sees her. She is the Persian princess Mumtaz. In one eternal moment, the Shah Jahan awakens to love, truly and deeply. She too is smitten. Their love is immediate, unquenchable. But burning desire waits upon the court astrologers. Until the planets are favorable and the stars have set a course for them, they cannot wed. At last, the princess becomes his wife, his chosen one. The years pass, but their passion for each other never wanes. Their very souls are mated. She becomes his most trusted advisor. She rarely leaves his side. Then the idol ends. When Mumtaz presents him with her last child, a little princess bursting with health. Her own life is ebbing from a difficult birth. Jahan can only watch helplessly while his beloved lies dying, dying before his eyes. With her last breath, she whispers a dying wish. Jahan assents. And the beautiful Mumtaz closes her eyes forever. Jahan locks himself in his chamber. He forbids the playing of music in the palace. No singing, no laughter. He allows himself no food, no sleep. His grief knows no bounds. When at last he emerges, he is gray, shrunk, bent. For the affairs of state, he has no time. Wars are postponed. 
Daily, he wants only to linger at the grave of his beloved. Over and over again, through the earth that covers her, he hears her dying words. Immortalize our love, Jahan. You, a builder of palaces and cities, must create a testament to our love that death cannot diminish. Jahan envisions a mausoleum of flawless white marble embedded with precious gemstones. Plans are poured over. A thousand elephants haul blocks of marble from quarries 200 miles away. 20,000 men, stonecutters, builders, artisans, craftsmen, labor some 22 years before it is finished. Jahan's promise to his dying beloved produces a masterpiece of perfect symmetry and a testament to the gentle power of love. Fronted by flower beds and reflecting pools, ornamental trees and sparkling fountains, the Taj stands guarded by minarets, slender sentinels facing the four directions. Delicate trellises, marble mosaics, and patterns of inlaid jewels are exquisite. There is, over the main portal, an Arabic text made of inlaid jasper. O soul, thou art at rest. Jahan's beloved lay in her tomb in the inner chamber facing the holy city of Mecca. Inscribed on the tomb are 99 names of God. Shockwaves. Jahan is overthrown by his own son and placed under house arrest in his own palace. While he lives, he will never be allowed to leave these confines. But from his barred window, he can look across to the resting place of Mumtaz. Everything has wasted away but his love. Jahan himself dies at age 74. His final resting place is a tomb beside that of Mumtaz. In death, they are again together. The Taj Mahal that shelters them comes as close to perfection as any human creation on Earth.